Welcome back to the Young Shakespeare Podcast. Today, I have the distinct privilege of talking to the Needham High School boys basketball team. These guys are stars. They've been called out by every big paper. They're the guys to beat. Uh, we got a pretty full house tonight. We got uh, Henry Bickford, Sam Hughes, John Hood, and Kevin Coppinger. Guys, welcome to the podcast, and thanks for your time. What up, Dan? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing much. Good to, have, good to have you back, Henry, and good to meet you guys. Um, guys, tell me a little bit about the season so far. Maybe uh, we'll start with John and Kevin, uh, the captains of the team. How, do you, how would you guys characterize the season so far? Uh, yeah, it, it's going well. We've, uh, for only playing eight, eight games last year, all league games, uh, we've had some exciting non-league games to start off the season. Uh, play, played BC High, played in a tournament with Westwood, and, and played uh, Cambridge in the second round. So uh, it's been going pretty well so far. Yeah, I think it's a talented group of guys. Pretty inexperienced, but we definitely have a lot of potential. Yeah, 100%. Sam, that kind of goes over to you being the sophomore. I know a lot has been made. You're probably, what, putting up 15, 20 points a game. How sort of exciting and, and what has it been like sort of putting your name out there, putting your name on the map in the Bay State Conference this year? Uh, yeah, it's been good because, like, I feel like I've been like working like, like a lot with our team like all summer long, all spring. Um, just like going to the gym every day and it's good to, like that's showing off. Um, it's also good to just like play with my teammates too. Like Henry didn't get to play, but he's back now. So like we're, we're pretty much a full team besides John, you know, he's out for a little, but he'll be back too. So it's going to be exciting here, definitely. Yeah, hundred percent. Henry, over to you. I'm glad Sam touched on that. Um, you're obviously a guy. There's a lot of expectations around you. Really showing what you can do with the magic. It was kind of your year to get your chance going. Started off with an injury, but you made your uh, return against Braintree. What is what's the process like, and what are you looking forward to this season? Yeah, I mean, it sucked. I got injured pretty bad, and I was out for like four or five weeks. And when I really thought it was going to be longer. So when I heard I could like play a full game against Braintree, it was really good. And, you know, we started off, it was a bunch of guys out, three of our, our big guys, two starters. Um, and so I kind of just got thrown in to start. And it was a little tough, just like starting in with like not a lot of practices. And, and I wasn't used to the flow, but, and it was a little bit of a, a little bit of an ugly game. You know, Braintree, mm -hmm. they fought hard and they were really tough. And they honestly out toughed us a little bit and we weren't ready for that. So, you know, we got to win and I think, now it's just time to keep progressing. And once we get our full team back, we got a couple kids injured. So it's giving the JV kids like they're coming up and they're getting some good experience and it's good opportunities for other kids to step up. 100%. One of the wins I was really impressed with you guys with was the Walpole game. Um, I think you won by around 10, give or, give or take a point or two, but it's a really tough Walpole team. It's been, you know, fairly strong over the last few years. And this year they've had some big wins. If anyone wants to speak to that, what were the, what were the keys to beating Walpole this year? Yeah, I think it was just exciting. It was open at night. Uh, we didn't know uh, much, what well, much to expect. We only bring back one starter from last year. A lot of roles were to be filled. And I think it was good to start off with a, a hard team and a, a mm -hmm. tough game. We definitely thought that game showed, showed kids that can step up. And uh, it was a really good first one. Yeah, Kevin, you as a, a captain, what would you say to something that John just kind of alluded to, which was that coming into the season, there was maybe a fear or concern that you guys had lost a lot of the stars that had made Needham good in the past season or two. How would you describe, you know, ignoring that kind of noise and showing people that this is a, a real contending team? Yeah, I mean, like you, like Sam said earlier, uh, we've been working in the gym together for a while. We know each other's play styles and we knew that we would have a lot of skill on the team and we're going to be a deep team. And um, I think that's really one of our strengths is that we can play eight, nine guys and still have people coming off the bench and providing. So that's a, that's a strong point for us. Mm. If you guys could each pick a game that you're looking forward to most coming up on the calendar, a team that you're really looking forward to play, who would it be? For me, it'd be Newton North. North. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah is that all around everyone wants to play newton north yeah, uh, yeah. We, uh, we play them back to back so it's going to be an exciting week 
Wow. Back to back. Is it one in their gym and one in yours? Yeah. yeah I think Tuesdays uh, at theirs. And then we play Friday night at home, I think. Mm -hmm. What do you think it will take to beat this Newton North team? And how do you think you match up with them? It's, it's definitely going to like, our offense has got to flow. We've been having a little trouble with that over the last couple of games. And I think we're locking in a practice this week, but they're a good team. They're a big team. So as long as we can shoot and we can get to the hole, I think, I think it's going to be good for us. Mm. Yeah. I would say probably just like, like our defense is pretty good too, which is good. So if we keep that up, like that would be a big key in that game, especially because they'll also be good defenders. Like we just have to be strong with the ball. That's what I'd say. Mm. Henry, how would you describe Sam's play so far this year? And how would you describe his style as a basketball player? Nasty. Pull-up jumpers, <laughs> threes, post-up, everything. I mean, like, you would think that he's going to play big, and then you put a big on him, and he's just going to drive right by you. And then you put a guard on him, and he's going to post you up. So I think it's hard to guard him. Like, at practice, I have trouble. Everyone has trouble. Everyone in the games has trouble. Mm. Yeah, Sam, how does it – Um. How would you describe your style? Is similar to how Henry put it? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'd say that. Um, like to do like a little bit of everything. Um, still kind of learning, but yeah, I definitely feel like I can like fill in a lot of spots in the court. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Being the youngest guy on this Zoom, how would you describe sort of the leadership of the captains and coming in? Like, how would you describe the culture of being in basketball? I remember talking to Henry in our last interview, and he said Needham's the kind of place where since you're a little kid, you're going to the games, you know the, the guys on the roster. How do you describe the culture need, need, need in basketball and the and the leadership style of these guys, these captains this year? Yeah, like, it's kind of cool, like, seeing, like, John, Kevin, like, they're, like, two years older than me. So, like, I've always seen them play in, like, high school. And, like, seeing them playing games, like, when I was, like, watching from the stands. And, like, you know, you kind of just get to see how hard they play. And uh, it's also, like, just playing with them in the gym over the summer, too like how competitive everyone is and like how like just going into practice every day like everyone wants to be there everyone's having fun everyone's working hard hmm. so yeah yeah uh john and kevin how do you guys remember this past season last year where it was such a good needham team there was lots of expectations there was potential if there had been a tournament you could have you know even made a run how does it how does it feel that kind of disappointment at, at not having that season? And how do you work forward from that, the playoffs and whatnot? Yeah, I think it was tough. And I think returners especially uh, know how much, how important playoffs are. And, you know, we, we put it all out there last year, even though there was nothing to play for. But we still um, and get more chemistry for people who are returning and to have a good year. So, Going into this year, we really know that a full season is so valuable. Um, and it's something that helps us prepare for games because we're not taking any game for granted. Yeah, I think it, it makes us feel grateful for all the games we do get to play. And um, I know last year we still gave it everything we had, but um, it definitely makes this season more special. And now mm -hmm. that we can maybe have a playoff run, uh, definitely doing it for the guys last year too. Yeah. Um, John, before the Zoom, Henry was telling me that you've got COVID right now. Is that is that right? Yep, that's right. That's yeah. crazy. This is like the Michael Jordan's uh, flu game that you're coming on my podcast right now. Yeah. I'm very honored. <laughs> How does it feel? Are you are you feeling OK? Are there symptoms or they're not symptoms? Uh, there's not no symptoms. So I'm just I'm, I'm in quarantine right now for a few more days. Um, it's tough watching just like like watching the film last night of our game it's it's so weird seeing mm. the team play that like I've seen myself play in in the film and me just not be there but it um it's it's, it's good uh like it, it'll be over soon enough so yeah I, I know there's an end in sight 100 percent. yeah elite athlete is not going to get taken down like this this isn't this isn't the end for you um how would you like when when do you get out of quarantine and will you be able to just come right back to the team after that? Yeah, I think my last day quarantining is, is Friday. So I'll miss our Friday game and then I'll be able to, to come back Saturday practice and, and to continue to play with the guys. 
are you completely like isolated in a room where like the only way to stay in shape is do like push-ups or can you at least like go outside in your driveway and like shoot get up shots and stuff like that yeah I have been doing a lot of push-ups in my room but <laughs> I have been dribbling outside in the driveway um just because I'm, I'm bored all day long but <laughs> I still find a way to get some things done yeah it's it's fortunate that I think it seems like a lot of places are finding creative solutions to, you know, whether it's uh, sort of rescheduling games, um, taking away fans, which is highly unfortunate, but it's better than not losing games. I think I was concerned when I saw that Wellesley had shut down their uh, athletic events. Were, what, what was your guys' reaction to that? Yeah, that that's crazy because they just said it's shut down and they don't know when it's coming back. So I, I was very surprised by that. Um, I think they might already be back. Yeah, uh, yeah. But like to just have a, a rule where you don't know when you're getting back, uh, I, I just feel for them. 100%. It, it all came on so quick, like just, and all of a sudden you're like, oh, Newton North, no fans. Oh, Wellesley's canceling. Oh, we got no fans. Dover has no fans. And it's just like out of nowhere and no one was expecting it. Tougher, tougher subject, but I feel like it would be, um, good to ask about because I think any any great team often has a great loss and that they're able to bounce back from it. What did you guys see in that Westwood game? Obviously, a tough team. Russ Dalabany, a lot of great players. They're uh, reigning three-time TVL Arch champions, but um, still must have been tough to lose in a nail-biter. What did you guys see in that game, and what do you think went wrong for you guys in, in the future? How, how do you think you'd try to move past that and do better? Uh -huh. yeah. Go yeah, ahead. You, you, I go. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. I would probably say like, uh, probably like, brought us to think like well, maybe we're not as good as we think we are. Um, just like not going in every game thinking that we're gonna beat the team, just be better than them. So, yeah, I think we definitely have to kind of like realize that we need to work harder in the games. Yeah, not look, not overlook anyone. Is that is yeah. that fair to say you, the rest of you guys too? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. It, it it sucks as we can't get them again you know we we, we can't like right because that i mean that game was kind of shocked all of us we we weren't expecting to lose and that's what made it so tough is i think we went in it with a bad mentality and that kind of messed up our stuff and we weren't running it running everything right and that kind of just ruined the whole game for us yeah what what did Westwood present that was hard to face up to? Were they shooters? Were they tenacious defense that was making you guys turn over the ball? What did what did they do so well? They were shooting pretty uh pretty well against us, especially one of their kids, number five, was kind of lighting us up. So I feel yeah. like they all know to run their play well too. Like they, did. they were a really well coached yeah. team. Yeah. I'll give them credit for that. They were very well coached. Um, and they did, they made few mistakes where we made some, some, some big ones. So I, I think the coaching, the, like the very well coached kids, like also want to be there just like need them, you know, they got that spirit and mm -hmm. uh, they got us in that one. hundred percent. Yeah. Guys talk a little bit about um, the landscape of uh, the Bay state this year. Who, who are the teams that have been winning games? Who are the teams that are, are going to be the strongest uh, challenges for you guys? Definitely, definitely North. I mean, like we've been saying that for a while. They're a good team. Um, Brookline's off to a hot start too. Walpole, I mean, we had them first, first game, but that was their first game with their new coach. That's a, you know, that was their first game too. So, I mean, they're a big team. Um, and there's a lot of tough matchups uh, in the base state. Yeah. Yeah. I think like Brookline six and out, right? Yeah, I think they're really uh, still. Yeah. The yeah. When do you guys play them? We um, played them last game of the season. Yeah. Oh wow! Just so it could the title could be on the line. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's tricky. What do you guys know about Brookline? Do you know about any of their? Um, players or the system they use what do you think what do you think of that I know they have a really good sophomore uh Andrew but you haven't Henry if you played him 
Yeah, I played against yeah. him. He, he's pretty good. He's pretty other good. than that, I really I don't know anybody else other than him. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, but he's uh, good. Yeah, I've heard they're pretty solid. So. Yeah, they got a guard they've been uh, has been playing since a sophomore. They're always just very good. Um, you know, always strong in the base state. Yeah, hundred percent. Sam, you were mentioning before the interview um, some of the teams that you knew would be uh, tough in D one. What what were some of those names that you thought were going to be uh, good teams this year? In the base state league or just um, um, no uh, MIA wise like MIA yeah, uh, yeah. D one state title. Yeah, I know that like um, like we played BC High earlier. They were really good. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're probably like I think they're number two or something in the state, and so like they they'll have a really good chance. Like they they were pretty good, and um, Malden Catholic was also the other one. I think I think they're ranked number one. So like, yeah, and they have a bunch of players on their team. Yeah, do you know do you know anything about the players on that team? Is anyone uh, Malden Catholic and and who they've got? Um, they have a kid, um, Jamari, he played Jamari Ham- Hamilton Brown, I think his last name is. He plays, um, expressions. He plays like, I think he's a junior. Uh, he's really athletic, really good. He, he can like jump out the gym. Uh, mm-hmm. and they have like a couple other point guards that are good. Yeah. Kevin, being a senior captain, how would you describe the culture of needing basketball and what do you hope your mark is on the program? Uh, I just like having um, the competitive um, environment at practices and everyone just wants to give it their all and Mm. show why they want to play in the games. But then also just being like friends off the court, being able to like joke around and just have fun with the guys. It's definitely important. Yeah. Yeah. That's definitely something I feel like um, that's definitely a reputation. I know Henry was telling me about, um, you guys have like one or two practices a year where it's just um, there's like no rules. How, Henry, how did you describe this to me? You just, you guys just kind of. Yeah. I was, each other. I was talking about, so we had last year, we had a football practice is our, what our coach called it. <laughs> we do this game, this like passing game in the, in the full court, you just pass it until the other team gets it. No fouls. Like kids would tackle each other, kids <laughs> with each other, grab jerseys, like fights, everything. Yeah, uh, that definitely uh, was uh, a chemistry builder for us. I mean, our coach pretty much lives by the rule of no no calling fouls at practice. So hmm. practice in general can just be a, a pretty tough place. You have to bring it each day, which which really helps the team. Um, and so we can definitely come across some of those like football type practices. Yeah. John, how would you describe uh, the coaching style of this team? Uh, coach Liner is a great coach. So we all respect him a bunch. Um, assistant uh, Coach Baker is also a great coach. They they really love what they're doing and and put a lot of time and a lot of effort into scouts for us, and and we're always prepared. So I think we kind of just just follow the lead of our coach, and uh, he definitely gets us where we want to go. Yeah, that's fascinating. Does anyone else want to jump in on that? Talk about coach. Yeah, yeah, I feel like they always want us, are always pushing us to like play harder and be tough. Um, that's definitely important to them. And I think, like John said, they know how to prepare well for games, which is like really impressive. They always know like a good scout um, will give us like a whole like, like, uh, like all these papers of like who the best player is and like what kind of defense we need to play and all of that. So, like, that's really good with them. Um, and they also get us like, play as a team, play team defense. That's also a big thing. 100%. Kevin, you talked a little bit earlier about the importance of needing basketball and what you guys do off the court, you know, except for when, you know, John might have COVID here or there. What do you, what kind of stuff do you guys do uh, as a team outside of practice? <clears throat> yeah. So this year has been kind of rough, just like last year. So in the past we've been doing like team dinners or we'll go to a local, um, like diner spot, breakfast spot, and get some food after a practice. So that's been kind of tough this year, but um, hopefully looking to do some more like team bonding activities once things open back up. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, definitely. And um, Sam, how would you um, how would you describe like 
the players to look out for in the uh, Bay State? Seems like you know a lot of the the names and the faces. Who are some other players that you think um, are really, really highly competitive and that people should look out for? Um, I don't I, – uh, I think, like, I know Newton North, um, Jose Polita. Uh, Henry knows him too. I think all I think everyone knows him. I know him just from like training with him and stuff. Uh, he's really like good, skilled. He has like a lot of good moves, can shoot. So I think he's definitely a good player on North. Um, and I don't know too too many other players, but like I said, like the kid on uh, Brookline, I know he's pretty good. Uh, but yeah, definitely, definitely those names come to me. Yeah. I presumably most of you guys play some sort of uh, club or off season basketball. Is that right? Yeah. 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 How would you guys describe the difference between, you know, public school, like Bay state basketball versus the clubs you're involved with um, whether it's the level or like the style of play, how do these things compare? I, I, I think fundamentally they're really different. Like you go about every game, like four minutes at a time and you just take it play by play by play. A, you, you kind of just run. You're just going. There's no zone defense. There's no, like, we might have four plays. But in high school, we have, like, 10 one-hitter plays. We might have, like, a bunch of different offenses, a bunch of different defenses. You got to, like, know everything. And if you don't know something, that could ruin the whole trip on offense. Um, so it's, 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 it's totally different. Yeah. John, what do you think about that? How would you – do you play for – uh magic or where do you play uh, at? yeah i also play magic uh, i don't play anymore because the senior but um I, I would definitely say our coach always says um about how in high school basketball you got a game at 6 30 you don't have a game at two and then four and then the next day at 11 30 so like taking each game more importantly than an aau game would be um and being pre more prepared for the games i think that's one of the biggest difference um, cause like, I don't know how many AU games you play in the spring and summer, but it's definitely more than, uh, a high school season. Mm -hmm. How about you, Kevin? Where do you, where did you play club and how would you describe the differences? Yeah, I played for mass commanders, um, this past year. And I think, yeah, if you have like a massive tournament, you got like three, four games in two days or whatever. So like John was saying, if you just have one game to focus on, you can't hold back anything. You got to give it all you have. So you're going to be sore after the game, and that's just what it is, but feel good after. 100%. And over to you, Sam. Where do you where do you play for, and what do you think of this question? Um, yeah, I play for expressions. And, like, I think this, like, because um, I play, like, a, as a younger age group, so, like, coming to high school, like, kids are a lot stronger, I've noticed. Like, like just, like, wider and stronger. Um but definitely, like John said, like taking each game more importantly, and also because like you're working to make the playoffs and then do well in the playoffs. And they use just a little different, like it's just tournaments. So I think just more like a bigger angle in high school basketball, which makes it more exciting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So show of hands here, who went to the Thanksgiving Day game? Mm -hmm. Who went to the game? Okay, that was absolutely wild am i right well how someone someone break down exactly what happened like historic rivalry between wellesley someone give me like the play-by-play -play how that all went down yeah so uh needham wellesley play every year um yeah it's the the longest rivalry right in in the country i think and uh needham's record before the game uh, i'm not sure it might have been one and nine uh something around there probably and, and Wellesley had a pretty good season. Uh, so as a Needham fan, you know, not expecting too much, mm -hmm. but, but it was, uh, as, as the game went on, it was, it was a very uh, fun game to watch. And especially being the senior year and us going one and one and nine or something like that, to have that, that close game against Wellesley was, was really fun watching it. 100%. Yeah. Henry, how did that, wasn't it, was it overtime or down on the end of the fourth quarter? How did it go down? I couldn't even tell you. I know we had four <laughs> chances at like the 10 yard line and uh, with the coin toss, if you go first in overtime, I think you're put at a little disadvantage because then the second team, they just got to score. Mm -hmm. um, 
and you know they, they ended up scoring and we lost but i mean it was awesome i mean i think everyone went home happy from needham anyways because we thought we were gonna be blown out we thought <laughs> it was awesome to watch i mean kids were having fun in the fan section just watching our team play well so yeah who are some of the um good players from the needham football team i know quarterback uh jay Stanton. how do you say it jay Castantin. Gastantin, yeah, yeah. He what's, also what's his play style soccer. like? Uh, he also is on the basketball team too. Oh uh, no way! Yeah, yeah, but I think he was he was a receiver last year uh, as a junior, which was his first year, and then he played quarterback this year, and it was his first year playing quarterback. So, I mean, he looked good out there. Like, like uh, hats off to him for just stepping into that role of uh, quarterback and and. You know the record may not reflect it, but but he he did play well and as a first year quarterback, it is I, something I couldn't have done. Yeah, I've heard I've heard a lot of good things about him too. That's why I've I've heard he's a good quarterback and whatnot. Um, absolutely crazy. So many so many good athletes uh, at Needham on this basketball team. Uh, earlier, uh, Sam was saying that John, you play lacrosse in the spring. Is that right? Does anyone else play any other sports? Yeah, I play volleyball in the spring oh no way no way yeah. it, it's in the spring yeah interesting yeah does Needham historically have a stronger program or base state how does how does that look yeah we've been pretty good and last year we won the states so we're pretty strong Jesus I, I think wow. he's downplaying it a little bit they didn't they didn't drop a set the whole year <laughs> and they like I mean they would have won the year before I mean did, did you guys win the year before or no uh I think like 2015, 2016 or something was the last yeah. one. I mean, they're they're set up to hopefully go for another run this year. Girls volleyball won two years in a row. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Thanks for pointing that out, Henry. Kevin's trying to hold back on us, not describing what what position do you play? Uh last year I played middle and this year I'm gonna play right side. Hmm. Why why the transition? Uh, last year we had um, a kid named Owen Fanning, who's actually going to Harvard to play volleyball. So someone needs to step in for him. So I'm going to try. Yeah. What are the parallels between volleyball and basketball? Is it is there the jumping ability, the coordination? Do you do you think playing both both sports helps you out? Yeah, it actually. So last year was my first year playing volleyball, but I've already noticed like my vertical has gone up and stuff like that. And even playing basketball, your instincts to go up and block a shot is like better too. So. Oh, no way. It That's very up. cool. Would it feel like winning a state championship? I mean, yeah, it was a crazy moment. We had fans there. They all rushed the, rushed the court. It's definitely fun. Jesus. That's sick. And uh, Needham lacrosse is also very strong. John, what position do you play in lacrosse? I play long stick midi. I just started my my freshman year. Um, I just the coach asked me if I wanted to play, and and I, I picked it up, and and I was it was pretty good at, at first, and and yeah, we have a very strong team. Um, we lost to BC High last year. I think it was the third round of the playoffs, but uh, we're returning every, all the whole defense. It, um, starting defense is returning, and we got. Attackman Nick Pisano uh, committed to Bryant for lacrosse, and he is um, he, he's going to be really good for us. So so we're really we have high hopes for this year. Wow, that's pretty insane. And yeah, that was um, I yeah I cover enough. I do enough interviews with athletes. I, I've definitely heard that's a very strong BC high team. Um, did you see it all about the MI reorganizing the lacrosse divisions? No, I didn't see it. Okay, that might not affect you guys as much. You might be still D1, but they actually expanded it. So I know towns like Medfield that were always strong in D2 there moved down to D3. Dover, Sherburne won the D3 state championship. They're now in D4. Um, that's just what I heard from um, Flano. I don't know. Do you guys know Flano? Yep. Okay, yeah. I'm assuming pe people involved in sports, you're going to know Flano. He's, he's all over the place. He's taking videos with his new camera. He's an absolute, absolute unit, absolute beauty. Um, but yeah, hundred percent. I think he used to cover. Actually, do you guys have like hometown weekly? Yeah. Okay. Does he still write for you guys, Mike Flanagan? He might. Yeah, he did. Does he? Yeah, he I, did. I don't, I because great. I know he has like 
he's like five towns he covers, but he used to have six. So I wasn't sure if he dropped Needham or Walpole or one of the something like that. No, I think he does. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Hundred percent. Yeah. His new video with with Norwood looked really good on the new camera. I just noticed that after you said that, I was like, it looks really like that new camera is nice. <laughs> yeah 100 percent. there's so many good highlight guys like i'm sure in basketball you guys have seen like bobby summers yeah yeah who like who's who are some who are some of the mixtape guys you like yeah bobby he would make a lot of a lot of stuff for magic so i, I would always see him around um at magic tournaments and and you know he he was om- almost mainly like magic's like main like guy making all the mixes for kids yeah henry yeah. Has, oh sorry go ahead sam go ahead i said henry has all the mixtapes <laughs> yeah, i have a couple <laughs> I, I i think bobby does does crazy bobby's like a mag- magician with the camera but then there's also like mike to which is two fleet tv uh then 508 he's like ken gavin mm-hmm. at ds young kid and he like just started and his stuff's really good too all the talents in dover sherman it's all there i don't know what to tell you can't hate it just is um yeah you got, do you guys have a weight program you're on do you guys have like team lifts no we don't not really not any. Uh, we don't do team lifts but every like i know everybody lifts individually sam kind of <laughs> i would sam sam might start soon hopefully <laughs> Yeah, oh, I guess God. God. Imagine, imagine a guy dropping 23 on you that doesn't even lift. Yeah, I mean, he didn't even lift. That's gotta hurt. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you should see like they had at the BC High game, they were calling they were calling Kevin Sarms. They were just calling him Sarms. They were just chirping, yo, Sarms. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Kevin's got the biggest arms on the team. Sure. Really? Kevin, you got you got the pipes? <laughs> I work out a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> a little what do you bit. What do you say to these accusations yelled out by the student section about SARMs? Uh, currently not on anything. So, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Take it as a compliment. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, that's that's probably one of the biggest uh, biggest compliments you can take. Do you guys – is there a lot of shit talking that goes on either between the players or from the stands during these games? Well, that well, game was <laughs> – Braintree, yeah. Yeah, Braintree didn't have, like, a massive student section, but it was, like, there wasn't a lot of people in the gym, so you could hear their chirping too well. And they were chirping kids at free throw line. BC High, I'm, I'm going to give it to them. They were funny as hell. They were <laughs> so funny. I was, like, laughing on the bench. It was crazy. They, they had some jokes. Wait, what are, What kind of stuff were they saying? I don't know. I, I think they, they had, like – so I wasn't playing that game, um, and – a, a kid, Marco Dicelli, was wearing was wearing my jersey, so they kept like chanting my name, Henry Bickford, because he was wearing my jersey. They kept chanting Henry Bickford, and I was they thought it was him, and they were like chanting Sarms and Kevin, and they were Sam had like a little bit of a physical play that the BC High team wasn't really fond of, and they kind of ripped on him every time he touched the ball in the second half. They all screamed the whole time he had the ball. <laughs> <laughs> they got a really good setup there because it's like the away bench is right in front of the whole student section. So if we like, you're calling a timeout in the fourth quarter and they're just all in your ear right behind you. <laughs> yeah. They were hoping to coach too. Yeah. <laughs> no, those, those Catholic schools are ruthless. Yo, <laughs> what were they saying to coach? <laughs> Everything. <laughs> <laughs> They were like distracting him when he was drawing up the plays. They were like, "Come on, coach, you better draw something up. You better draw <laughs> something up." And like... yeah. Oh my god! Only in high school sports, this this stuff's crazy, man. Um, what's the like? What would you guys say is the most distracting thing when you're shooting a free throw? Like, what's worse, absolute science, a silence, absolute like pandemonium silence, and then it's loud right at the last second. Like, what's the a chant? What's the worst thing you can hear? Uh, I think when they, like, sing. When they always sing a song. <laughs> first one. 
They were singing the ABCs in, at BC High. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I can stay focused if they're like trying to chirp me, but if if they do something that makes me laugh, then like that's that's what gets me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How about for you, Kevin? What do you find the most distracting? I don't know. Sometimes if it's like silent and then someone screams, that can catch me off guard. Makes the yeah. something. Yeah. That was my specialty in high school, actually. I would uh I was in the student section uh, for the Dover Sherman team uh and I'd like it would go just completely silent, and then I just scream at the top of my lungs like a fucking maniac. And uh, that that went on for a few times, and like a few players, I you know they missed, looked like their free throw percentage went down, and then I got called down to the office, and they were like, "What are you doing at the basketball games? What, what do you what do you think your stat line is for missed missed free throw?" <laughs> uh, I think I probably decreased about twenty percent. I mean, you just look wow. at this fucking big redhead screaming at the top of his lungs like after complete silence like that's gonna there's no way jesus christ himself would have to think what's going on up there you know what i'm saying <laughs> um yeah and then what what teams do you what teams will get heated against i think henry and i we touched on this before but newton north there's a bit of a a rivalry i mean you you don't have to talk about that if you don't want to but is is it fair to say it's heated it's definitely heated. We know other guys and they're a good team and like they have really good guards, like give, give them all the credit. They're really well coached. And, you know, a lot of the guys have know the rivalry and they want to be a part of it and they want to win in the rivalry. So it's just like heated, just like you don't even have to be in the game. And it's just like, it's always like people are looking forward to it. Fans included. Mm. I yeah, think, the student sections are always crazy there. Like yeah. Whenever. yeah. So they always pack it. What about uh, Wellesley? Because obviously, like, football, that's the Thanksgiving Day rival. You've been playing them, you know, since right after the Civil War or something crazy. Right? <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. Um, is it – I know their basketball program isn't as strong. Is that – is it not as much of a rivalry or is it just as intense, would you say, as it is in football? <clears throat> I think um, like it will definitely I think we play them um, at Needham on a Friday night so I think that game just will definitely bring people because anytime it's just any sport Needham Wellesley there's always going to be fans coming to that and we scrimmaged them earlier in the year and it it, it wasn't it, it was a little chippy so so I think that will be a good game they're always they're very well coached with coach Reedy and um, that they, they 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 wanted it in the scrimmage and and you know the they have some people that just give it their all. Yeah. And like their record right now doesn't tell the whole story. I mean, they had, they had some good, like they played Brookline who were six and oh, Walpole was really good. Uh, North, like exceptionally, like they're really good. I mean, they had a hard schedule, so it's never like a team where you can look down on them because they, they have grit and they, they're really well coached. And no matter like what the talent is, they're always going to put up a fight. But I think going into it, we're ready to, we're ready to, you know, maybe maybe go to Pound Town, hopefully. Yeah, hundred percent. How would you, <laughs> Sam's over there cracking up. Uh, <laughs> how would you, uh, yeah? How would you guys describe what Needham brings to the table, um, as far as the X's and O's? What do you What do you guys do so well that makes you a hard team to beat? Um, I think, I think we like buy into our roles pretty well and kind of like trust our systems or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, and then we try to like feed off of our defense, like it kind of starts there mm -hmm. and then work from there, try to get out in transition. So, yeah. Yeah. Would you, Sam, would you agree with that? I know you had something to say, but defense, um, point scoring, like what kind of things? Yeah, I would probably say that. Also, like, we're a really deep team. So, like, anyone can come off the bench and, like, have a good effect on the game, like, make the play good. So, I think definitely, like, having a deep bench is really helpful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have, like, there's so many guys that, like, are in this Zoom right now that are, like, we have so much captain leadership, like, that, I mean, captain leadership and also senior leadership. And, you know, even the kids that are sophomores, they're all totally bought into everything. And, you know, when we can switch from man and 
you know, when we have super big kids and super small kids and we can switch a lot of the screen and roll and then we can go into zone and we can do like everything. So as long as our offense is flowing off our defense, I think we're really solid. Yeah, maybe a big, maybe a bigger zoom next time. <laughs> yeah, but... <laughs> I said before, if need be, we'll get the whole 15, 15 man roster in this zoom. Just get the whole whole squad. You know, as a someone that does these sports interviews that really enjoys this kind of stuff, I'm always looking for good interviews. And obviously, like we touched on before, Needham has a ton of great sports, a ton of great athletes. You know, besides basketball, what are some other um, sports that Needham excels at? What are, what are some of the good teams? Who are some of the good athletes? Uh, yeah, yeah, I think Needham has really good athletes all around. Like on the football team, uh, not great record, but just th those kids were some athletes. Um, a couple of people won playing basketball because they, they, they had big frames. But I think uh, volleyball, like definitely, I mean, not losing a single set, that, that's crazy. Um, lacrosse also, too, some two top uh, teams. In yeah. This. yeah, I would say lacrosse because like, I feel like they've been good for so long. Mm -hmm. like, they've always had like really good players like go to college and stuff. Yeah, I mean, the football team historically is solid. There's a lot of kids that have played D1, and I think all around a bunch of the teams are good. Uh, I couldn't I couldn't tell you a lot about hockey, but I know that the hockey program all the way up from, like, being a little kid, like, even I played hockey, and, like, uh, there's three teams for, uh, for the hockey program, and they have a lot of kids that want to play over there, too. How would you guys describe the town of Needham? I don't, I don't know a lot about it. I know there's a McDonald's that's on the way to my pediatrician's office growing up. <laughs> Pretty good McDonald's. Um, you know, how, how would you guys describe the town? Um, I think it, the town is, um, is a very spirited town, whether in like, like the summertime, 4th of July fireworks. A lot of, there's a lot of town activities that brings out a lot of people in the town and, and um, just a lot of families come here to, to like have kids gr and grow up and put them through the good school systems. And so I think that like adds to the fact that it's, it's very spirited, like with high school sports, um, high school uh, accomplishments. I think those two things go hand in hand. Yeah. I would say like, I feel like everyone's just like cool with each other at the high school. And, like everyone's kind of friends. So like, it's pretty fun to go to school sometimes. Like you see everyone joke around in the hallway. I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, and it, it's it's just like a small town, but it's not like the smallest town. And so there's like a lot of kids. Um, and then the town's like around Needham. I think like Wellesley, Dover, Newton, like all of us have a bunch of friends in those towns. So I think it's like a collective of all everywhere near us is like, Kevin, you want to hop in on that? What would you say about Needham? Yeah, I mean, I think it's like a small, smallish town. So like everyone kind of knows each other and is aware of like, uh, like everyone's name pretty much. And then um, I think there's like a lot of like young families who come here because it's a good place for like an education. So it's all that uh, like public school program. Rockets is like a cool mascot. I like the Needham Rockets. I think that works. What's like the lamest in the Bay State? What's like what's like a nickname you guys just do not like that you just don't think works? That is a good question. That's a good, good question. What are How some? Are what are brain brain yeah, so like? There's like the brain trees. What like are the wamps? The wamps. Brain tree wamps. Yeah, that's a. That's a bad <laughs> what is um, <laughs> what is uh, what's Walpoles? Uh, they were, the, I think they might've changed theirs. I think they were, I think, the that, I think they had one that like they had to change. Cause like, Oh, they like, were the rebels, right? Yeah, they rebels. I think. The rebels. Did they change it. I think so. What is it now? Uh, I, I couldn't tell you. Yeah. I know Natick changed too. They went um, from uh, I think Redmen to Red Hawks, something like that. Uh, Interesting. Yeah, you need you need a good nickname to instill spirit. I'm I come I competed in the TVL and there were like some good ones. Like I was the Raiders. 
the Warriors. Two Warriors. There's a lot of Warriors around here for sure. Is um, more with the Warriors? What? Oh, I don't know. They they switched the TVL when I was like a junior or something, and they were TVL large, so I didn't know that. But then there's like Hopkinton is the Hillers, <laughs> and uh, Ashland is the Clockers because some guy from the town like invented like a specific type of like analog clock or something like that. I don't even know. That's tough. <laughs> Hard to get like pumped up for a game, you know, and be like clocker pride or whatever. <laughs> I, th- I think Needham, Needham had a military base or like a rocket defense system. Yeah, I think so. At our public garden. And a public garden used to be a missile defense like unit or whatever. I don't, mm. I don't know what you'd call it. That's why it's the rockets. Yeah. Who knew? Huh. What's the best food in Needham? Every, let's go everyone go around. Start with uh, start with Henry. What's, what's the best place to get food in Needham? There are so many good places. I'm going to give two. So – Every day at lunch, I I go to Hungry Cowdy, which is right next to the high school, and they it's like really good Mexican food, um, and then definitely like Bagels Best. I like Bagels Best a lot, and some solid bagels. Yeah. Uh, I would say Cafe Fresh is better bagels. <laughs> oh, oh, we got beef. <laughs> this is a bit that just goes on and on. I think Cafe Fresh is like probably that's like by far the best like bagel place for sure other wow. than other than bagels best it's the best <laughs> yeah yeah it's not even close <laughs> all right well we got to get let's get some leadership on this what do you, what are the captains thinking that this debate between the two bagels what do you guys win i'm definitely on sam's side oh. and on sam's side i'm on, I'm on henry's side <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna need a, a tiebreaker somehow yeah yeah um yeah, John and Kevin, where where is your favorite place to go for food? Uh, I would say Needham House of Pizza. I really like they got an Artie special, and um, like Artie is like the owner, I think, and it's like like steak tips, cheese, um, fries, but I substitute it and ask for curly fries and then uh, ketchup and mayo, in, in like in like a wrap, and it's it's really good. Mm. Yeah, I'd say probably uh, Nicholas Pizzeria. It's like right next to my house. I know like all the guys there and stuff. So, yeah, that's interesting. There's a Needham House of Pizza. If you're if you're a real town, you're gonna have a house of pizza. That's the thing. There's a Millis House of Pizza, a Medfield House of Pizza. Stay away from Medfield House of Pizza, by the way. Actually, <laughs> go there if you want if you want terrible food at a really high price. They go. got roaches crawling. <laughs> i'm not gonna make any accusations i don't want to catch a defamation suit but uh wouldn't be surprised wouldn't be surprised i'll say that <laughs> yeah man there's um it's funny you guys eating that food too being athletes and all like i was at um <laughs> what was i, I was in the i go to so i go to school in north carolina state um it was the day of i want to say the clemson game or something we i went with some of my friends to it was one of those southern like chicken places that's just like disgusting but like great tasting food and like the nc state like cross country team um rolled up and these are kids that are like on the huge scholarships they were like running in the national championship like the girls uh it, it wasn't the girls team but to put it in respect the girls won the ncaa d1 championship and the guys were really high accs and i just looked at them i was like i can't believe you guys eat this stuff <laughs> <laughs> everyone's got to have a, a cheat day yeah 100 yeah, percent. it's good bonding too sometimes if you know go with your teammates to get food and something you know stuff like that obviously um that's that's got to be a part of the system that's got to be uh, a part of how it does what's what's the turnout been like for the games what has the needham student section been like so far has there been any talk of reduced capacity or are you guys still at um, 100%? Um, so the first couple, I think we've had three home games and we've had a, had a good turnout for, for all of them. Um, and I think they just switched the rule though to for two weeks, just two parents from each player. Um, so I think that's just for two more, for two weeks. Um, but when we were able to have fans, we, we did um, pack it pretty well. Yeah, the, 
the Weymouth game, we had we had like a theme and everything. And our first game was a Tuesday night game. We had a lot of kids. And then the Weymouth game, first two points of the game, like Sam caught the ball, spin move, turn around, dunked on a kid. Like first two points of the game <laughs> for everything else. And the fan section was going crazy. But hopefully, because we have a home game against Tech Boston, who's like historically like really good. And we play them almost every year. And so hopefully if the rules uplifted, then we can get a good turnout there. Sam, what was your what was going through your head when you put that dunk in? I was pretty excited. I wasn't expecting it to happen. Like I don't I don't know. And then like after it happened, I was kind of just screaming. <laughs> I wasn't even screaming at the kid. I was just like screaming. <laughs> <laughs> just yeah. Screaming in general. I love it. I love it. Kevin, where's the hardest place to that you guys have to play? Where is like the noisiest, most, you know, you know, hard to deal with the student section? I definitely say New North, just from the past, their student section's always chirping us the entire time. It's really loud. It's definitely a tough environment to play in. So I'm excited. Oh, actually, they're not gonna have their fans this year probably when we go there, but yeah. Damn, tough to see it. If you guys, uh, who do you guys root for? Let's go around and hear college basketball teams. Actually, let's hear this. One, who's your favorite college basketball team to root for? And two, who do you think uh, takes March Madness this year? Start with Henry. Oh, I, like I don't want to be that kid and just say Duke because I feel like everyone says that. They're so good. I also think – I also watched a lot of the Alabama games. I think they're really good. Yeah. Uh, Illinois is good with that that big man. What's his name? Um, Kofi? Yeah, Kofi. Kofi went crazy like last night, right? He had like 29 or something like that. Wouldn't be surprised. Big boy. Who do you root for? Uh, every time I've watched Alabama games, I've been pretty excited to to see them win. So I'd say Alabama with J.D. Davidson and Javon Quinterly. Yeah, I, I root for uh, Providence a lot. My, my uncle had has season tickets there and he he'd bring me to some games. So I always w- watched Providence uh, college growing up. I think they're like six, they were 16th um, in the polls like a couple of days ago. I think they just lost last night. Yeah. 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 They lost. Yeah. I'll probably yeah. drop them. Yeah. They're very good. AJ Reeves and company. Very right. solid team. And who do you think, who do you think takes March Madness? Oh, I have no clue. I, my March Madness bracket is always horrible. Yeah, I'll never. So whatever I say, do not put it. But <laughs> maybe Purdue could have a shot. And I had Baylor winning last year, and you know what happened. <laughs> Sam, how about you? Uh, who do you root for? Who's gonna win this year? Um, I was rooting for Villanova. That's like a team I always watch. Um, I watch Providence a little too. Uh, but I've seen Baylor this year, and they're they're pretty good. I don't know if they're still good or not, but like they they've been, I think they'll win. Mm-hmm. I think that what they're ranked number one right now, right? With that with that oh, big man. Yeah. They're filthy. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. I think they'll win. Back to back. Mm-hmm. Kevin, how about you? Yeah, I also uh, root for Villanova a lot. I also see a lot of the uh, Marquette games, and then um, I think Duke Duke will take it home. Kev's going to Villanova. Yeah. Nice. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> sorry, it's tricky with the Zoom. Uh, obviously, I go to NC State, so I root for the Wolf Pack right there like that. There you go. I'm going to say Baylor takes it. I was watching last night. They look good against Oklahoma. They look, they've looked better. They haven't looked much worse, so. I think I like Baylor. The one seed has really been a curse, though. I'll say that. If you guys have been watching, Duke. Uh, so Gonzaga's one seed gets knocked off by Duke. Great game. Then Duke goes. They lose to Ohio State. And then was Purdue number one? And then they lost. Like, like Purdue, yeah. When is when has this ever happened before? The one team just keep losing. I don't know. Yeah. They Purdue's got that kid. Jay, it's Jaden Ivy, right? Is that his name? Yeah. Something like that. I've heard I I keep seeing him on ESPN and like my Instagram. Let's go uh favorite NBA player 
maybe a player you model your game after, maybe just a player you like watching. What do you got? Who do you guys have on that category? I got to think. Someone, someone else go. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't want to screw this up. This will be on the internet forever, who your favorite player is. So, oh, my, Mine's Kevin Durant, for sure. Kevin really? Durant. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people really hate Kevin Durant, so that's – Yeah, I don't know. I'll be tough to be a fan of his. Yeah. I just like the way he plays. Sam, Sam kind of plays like Katie a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Not seven feet, but <laughs> – <laughs> Yeah, but I've liked him since, like, Oklahoma. I have a jersey of him and everything. Nice. Kevin, how about you? Favorite uh, player? Favorite NBA player? I'm not trying to be a homer or anything, but I it is Tatum. I don't know. I just like how smooth he plays. It's just silky. I like it. Well said. How about uh, how about you, John? Henry, you better be thinking. The gears better be turning because you're about to be up. You're about to be up after John. So. I'll stall, Henry. Um, I – I really like John Morant, I'd say. He's just so fun to watch. Um, but, you know, I, I wouldn't – I don't, like, really have a favorite, favorite player. But I really like college basketball more than, than the NBA. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, current and in the NBA right now, I like I like watching Rob Will a lot because I think he's really good. Um, he gets a lot of blocks, I, and I think that's cool. Um, all time, probably like Jason Williams, his like mixtapes, like I would always watch as a kid, like just nasty passes and everything. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, Brian Scalabrini actually lives in Dover. It's funny. Cause I went to basketball camp as a kid and people gave me the nickname Scal just for having orange hair. I guess that's just how it happens. You have, you have orange hair. You're, oh, you're Scal. That's your new nickname from now. On. Have you guys heard that, that he, he lives in Dover and he's like, involved in basketball uh like clinics and things like that yeah i feel like yeah. i would see him around like we played in a fall league um in medfield and he was just like at the court next like working out like yeah. on the the next door court yeah i i always see scowl at, at uh at kingsbury whenever i go with luke he's always there training someone or like playing wow Yeah. Do you think you could? How would you go one on one against him, Henry? How do you think you would fare? I don't. Do you see? Do you see that one video that went viral of him playing against some kids at four kicks? Yeah. Was, oh, I, yeah, yeah. Like cooked them. So I probably wouldn't. Probably wouldn't do too well. Yeah, I mean, you see him like because he lives in Dover, um, and his uh his daughter's on the varsity basketball team. I actually see him around a good amount. Um, and he's just like this cool guy but he's you, you like you're not gonna miss him because he's like six nine so yeah he like walks around he's big redhead like me and i'm like oh there there he is there's like that nba player pretty 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 sweet to have him around town and yeah i guess that's gonna happen when you have the celtics franchise and stuff that there's there's gonna be some some people around who's who's like um and need them are there any like i don't know not like necessarily famous people but are there any like townies or people that are just kind of legends like either like a coach that's been there forever or just like a spectator there are there are needham celebrities that's a good question yeah um i would say the football coach he's been there for a while he, he's not the head anymore but he like uh coach duffy he's still he grew up in needham um and and he he, he like i think like most people know him uh, he would be a, a, a town celebrity. 100%. Um, what advice would you guys each give to a kid out there watching Needham basketball or just high school basketball in general and said, hey, you know, when I get older, bigger, what I want to do is I want to be just like Henry, John, Kevin, or Sam. I want to be a varsity basketball player. What, what would your advice be to a kid that wants to uh, become where you guys are at right now? I think the best advice to give is figure out what kind of player you are and then figure out what, what your role is going to be on the basketball teams you're going to play for and just like own your role and just own your play style and just like master that because that's what you're going to be doing the rest of your career. Yeah. I think like getting good at the things that other people don't want to do. Like I, I think I like, 
the way I got minutes on varsity my sophomore years, I was just known for like backdoor cuts. Like that's all I would do. And I would, um, that's how I would just get my points off pure layups and just like backdoor cuts. So it's just like the hustling, the like being conditioned to just like play good defense and then always be moving and cutting. It's like the things that people don't want to do. They just want to like, like get in a um, triple threat and just like drive or shoot. But it's like how you play off ball is what's going to get you minutes. Yeah. I would say also like, it's like you're not the best player in middle school. Um, like I feel like a lot of us, like we weren't always like the best players in middle school. And like, I just feel like you, you can't like let that bother you and you just have to keep working. Yeah, I think you gotta just keep working on your craft, like sharpening the tools, but then also making sure you're like strengthening yourself and staying pliable so you can stay on the court and not be injured. That's a big, big thing. 100%. Guys, need them basketball. Thanks so much for coming on the Young Shakespeare podcast. Thanks for having us. Awesome. Thank you. Appreciate yeah. it. Awesome. Wow. Well, thank you so much to the Needham basketball team. And this time it really almost is the Needham basketball team, maybe half of it um, for coming on the podcast. It's been an absolute pleasure. These guys are awesome and I'm going to root for them going forward. Um, so thanks so much to them. And uh, thanks for everyone for listening, liking, watching, subscribing and sharing. Tune in for the next episode of the Young Shakespeare podcast and have a great day.